Hello, my name is Thomas Dimitrovich. In this session, we'll specifically speak to transformer basics and how to calculate the full load amps of a transformer. This is important for the proper selection of primary and secondary overcurrent protective devices around a transformer. The estimated duration of this presentation is three minutes. The full load amps of a transformer is usually printed on the nameplate of the transformer, but in the design phase, we won't have that actual device in front of us, so we have to learn how to calculate this information by hand. In calculating the full load amps, we're usually presented with the equation that you see in equation three. What I'm going to do in this session is help you understand how we got to that equation. We're going to derive it. The fundamental premise that gets us to full load amps is seen in equation number one. We have to get to a single phase KVA and divide that by a single phase KV. Let's look at equation number two. Here we're gonna focus on the numerator first. So we have to get to the single phase KVA and we have a three phase transformer, so to get there, we have to divide the three-phase KVA by three, and that gets us a single-phase KVA. Now, let's focus on the denominator. To get to a single-phase kilovolts, I need to take the primary line-to-line -line voltage, the three-phase line-to-line voltage, and divide that by square root of three. That gets us to a single-phase line-to-neutral voltage, or a single-phase voltage. To get the single-phase volts to a single-phase kilovolts, I need to divide that number by a thousand, and now we have the single phase kilovolts in the denominator. So now to get to equation three, I need to simplify equation two. We have to move the square root of three and 1000 to the numerator and then move the number three to the denominator. What I don't show here is the fact that when we divide the square root of three by three, we get one over the square root of three. That's why you only see the square root of three in the denominator. So equation three gives us the full load amps on the primary of this transformer. Next, we have to calculate the secondary full load amps. Calculating the secondary full load amps is very similar to how we calculated the primary full load amps. The difference is that I'm using the secondary voltage instead of the primary voltage in the standard equation. So we have the three phase KVA times 1000 over the square root of three divided by the secondary line to line voltage. That gives us the secondary full load amps. So here we're going to calculate the full load amps on the primary and secondary of a 480 to 208 volt 30 kVA transformer. We're going to leverage the equations we just derived. We can calculate the secondary full load amps as shown in equation one. That full load amps is 83.27 amps. So I'm now gonna calculate the primary full load amps and I'm gonna do that two ways. One, I'm going to leverage the turns ratio of the transformer and I do that in equation number two. To calculate the primary full load amps, by using the turns ratio, I take the secondary full load amps and I multiply that by 208, the secondary voltage, and divide it by the primary voltage, which is 480 volts, and I arrive at 36.08 amps. If I use the equation for primary full load amps that we just derived, I see that I calculate 36.08 amps. Both of those numbers, I get the same exact answer. So this is just a different way of looking at the exact same calculation we just made. If I'm drawing full load amps on the secondary and place a meter in that location, the meter would read 83.27 amps. If I placed a meter on the primary at the same time, the current on the primary would read 36.08 amps, thanks to the turns ratio of the transformer. These are the two important equations you need to know. The basic difference between these two equations is that the primary full load amps is based on the line to line voltage on the primary and the secondary full load amps is based on the line to line voltage of the secondary. The connection of the transformer, primary and secondary windings, delta Y or other doesn't impact these calculations. Thanks for sharing some time to talk about this technical topic.